Hi, Jason with Tormach. Uh, I got a fun little project again for you today. Uh, we have a component we need to prototype and I didn't want to order a piece of material for it so I went ahead and I dug through our scrap rack and found a couple pieces that should work. Um, I thought it'd be a fun little video to put together showing how we're going to work through an unknown material. So we're going to program it up in the conversational, we're going to figure out what this material is, how it machines, and then we're just going to go ahead and make this component. So let's go make this thing. So when you're working with an unknown material, there's kind of a few steps you can take to get an idea and start to, you really just need to establish a starting point so you can make some chips um, successfully and then work up to a reasonable speeds and feeds and something that'll make your part successfully. Um, some of the stuff I like to grab is you can do a spark test where you just take the material on a bench grinder or a belt sander and you can analyze the sparks and just kind of get a feel for what material it is. You can do a file test or a hardness test um, and let you know if it's you know, a soft or hard material if you're working with something pre-hardened or a dead soft state. Um, a couple other things we can do is just a good visual inspection. You can see a couple different pieces that I've found here. Um, we have this piece which has some surface rust on it. Um, you know, so obviously this is some sort of steel of some sort. These other components that I found, other pieces of the stock that I found are all nice and shiny, have a nice machine, bright finish on them. Um, these are probably some sort of stainless steel, just based on color. We can check for um, whether the stock is magnetic or not. So it's got a little magnet. Um, this is magnetic. You know, we kind of just work through and see. You know, these are, then this one's not magnetic. You know, so if these two are some sort of stainless, it would have to be in the 4 Series family um, since it is a magnetic material. And the last thing you can do is a quick easy check would be just to kind of get an idea of what the material weighs. You know, if it's aluminum or something, it's obviously going to be very light. Um, titanium is pretty easy to identify by weight as well because it looks like steel, but when you pick it up, it's, it's nice and light. Um, so I'm just going to grab a file here and see how it, it, if any of these materials are soft or if they're hard. I just like to grab it and kind of just cut it on an edge to see what I get. I'm just kind of do a comparison here between all the different ones that I have. And just kind of analyze how deep it goes and you know if you get something that's really hard obviously it's going to barely scratch that surface but all these are pretty equal. So I'm assuming that all of these are going to be in the annealed state or in the soft state. For our part, we need about a 1.6 inch diameter. Um, so these two pieces of material here are about two and a half inch, so these will work for us. So I'm just going to go ahead, grab this guy, and uh, put it in the lathe and start cutting some chips to see what we get for chip color and formation and stuff to try to establish some sort of speeds and feeds recipe to make this part. Um, so I got the stock loaded up here. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on at a conservative value. Um, you know, I'm just going to start, if it is some sort of stainless steel, my kind of starting point is always at 200 to 350 surface footage. Um, so I'll just be conservative. I'll go ahead and turn it on at 200 surface footage, start up our spindle here, and uh, see what kind of chips we get. I'm just going to use the jog shuttle to take a few light cuts just to get an idea of what we're working with. So just taking a light facing pass here, making a nice little curly chip. I need to set my zeros and stuff on this part, so I'll just kind of do this at the same time as we go. So just come in here and we'll find one of our chips and we'll kind of see what we've got. So you can see with our chip, we've got just this nice little curly chip. Um, it's still the same color as the material, so we didn't put enough heat in it to, to you know, turn it brown or anything. So you know, 200 surface footage seems like a conservative value. We could go ahead and try to bump that up and see at what point we start getting this to turn colors. So we'll go ahead and bump up our surface footage. Um, it's always good to go in you know, conservative steps so that you don't you know, you don't want to burn out an insert or chip out an insert while you're, you're figuring out how to make your part. So we'll bump it up in a couple different increments here. So we're up to about 300 surface footage. We're going to go ahead and try cutting it here. It's taking about a 10, 15 thou face pass. It's about a 6 thou per revolution chip on there.
So you can see we, we still don't have any color in our chip. So even 300 surface footage, we're still, you know, we, we still have a lot left on the table. We're not even turning the chip's colors yet without coolant turned on. Um, you know, at this point, I'm pretty comfortable starting to do our OD turn work and stuff. We just have a couple different shoulders and diameters to turn. Um, so we're going to use the same tool. We'll just get this thing programmed and we'll start cutting it and working through this. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, what you don't want to do is break your insert. And what I managed to do is chip my insert. Um, what I did was I took a real light face pass back over the surface that, that I had already cut um, and then you could see the chips getting a little warmer and then my insert failed. So what that kind of tells me is that this material is probably um, you know like a four series stainless which work hardens very readily for you because um, on a real light skin pass it got harder to machine than at my, at my little heavier facing pass. Um, so just something to keep in mind as I'm programming this that I need to go ahead and cut it and I can't baby it and you just you have to let the tooling do the work and trust your numbers which um, in a scenario like this just makes it a little more exciting so I'm gonna go ahead flip the insert around here and we'll get this tools all touched off and we'll start making this part all right so we got a little program generated here we just use the profiling in conversational we did some 50 thou depths of cut. I did about 7 thou per revolution feed rate for roughing and a 5 thou on the finish. Um, you know, since it is probably some sort of stainless steel, um, we definitely don't want to go too slow so we don't work hard in this and break some more tooling. Um, I'm going to run my speeds and feeds down, my feed rate, my max velocity down to zero. Go ahead and get this thing started. As this is running, I'm really going to be watching the chips and seeing what they look like, if they're starting to turn colors. Um, I can tweak this as we go here with our, our velocity and our feed rate overrides and stuff so that if I start seeing a lot of you know, really colorful chips, I can slow this thing down and just try to get this part made successfully. Stainless steel is one of those materials that you just need to go for. When, you, when you're going to cut it, you need to know your numbers are good and you need to let it cut. So as it's cutting, you can hear that it sounds pretty nice. The chips are coming off. They're still silver in color, so we're not going too fast. We are forming a nice little curl. The chips look like little sixes from what I can see. Um, it sounds pretty nice. So since it just is a one-off component, I'm just going to go ahead and let it run. Um, as bad as I want to play with it and make it run faster, I'm just going to go ahead and let it finish this part so we can just get this project wrapped up. I just want to turn it up. <laughs> I'm sitting here laughing because I want to make this machine run faster, but I know when you're making a one-off component, a lot of times it's better off just to be patient and let the part finish than it is to try to optimize a single part, because if I get a little too aggressive and I break an insert or heat treat this part, um, it's going to take me a lot longer to make it a second time. And it's always one of the struggles of, of machining a, a one-off component. Is sometimes you just want to make it run more efficiently, but it, it's Sometimes you're better for just to leave it alone. So you can see we got a couple different diameters we had to thread. So we're just working through this. Let's check in the thread as we go, just to fit it up to the components that we have. So you see we got a pretty nice fit on this. This is a M40 uh, by 1.5 thread. So we got uh, barely any play in that at all. So that's a pretty nice fit. So I'm pretty happy with that. So all we got to do now is drill and bore a hole. Uh, drill a hole and then bore a little oversize and then um, put some thread reliefs on this and part it off. So let's keep working through this here as we go. The drill is something that makes you a little more nervous. They're usually not as forgiving as an as a OD turning tool or um, you know, as a general cutting tool. The drills are typically a place where you can get yourself in a little trouble a little faster. So it should be interesting with this. Um, you know, stainless steel that we're working with that we're not quite sure. So what I did was I, I took a real light pack, I did a 50 thou pack, I did um, right around 150 surface footage, so I'm right at 1000 RPM and I'm 
a little nervous on this part of it because drilling is always a little interesting. So we'll go ahead and, um, you know, with it, again, I think it's some sort of stainless steel, so I can't really baby it. I kind of just have to let it cut or I'm going to get myself into trouble pretty quickly. So I got 3,000 per rev, which should be a pretty conservative feed rate. And here I am playing with the, the feed override. It, it was a pretty hard loading sound. I'm just bumping the spindle speed up a little bit. I don't want to take my chip load down and rub the component or rub the part and cause it to work hard. And so it's sounding better there. Anytime I drill a hole and I have to come behind it with a boring bar, I always like to verify the depth of my, um, my drilled hole. It is a very unfortunate event when you hit the bottom of a hole with a boring bar that's not quite drilled deep enough. You know, we drilled at 1.75, but since it is an inserted drill, we're measuring about 1.7. So it should work out well. I only need to go about 1.65 deep, so it'll give us about 50 thousandths clearance back there. Ready? Yep. So here's our part, we got it all finished up. You see we had a couple diameters of thread and ID to bore. Um, you know, it's always a little more interesting working through a project when you're not quite sure what material you have. Um, but you know, with our quick little checks at the beginning and some test cuts, we were able to um, determine some speeds and feeds and everything that would work well and uh, make this component successfully. So I hope you guys find this useful and helpful if you ever have that same experience. Um, feel free to check out our other YouTube videos here and subscribe to our YouTube channel here.